I mentioned that uh, cloud computing systems have tiers and that choices you need to make about how to do data replication uh, are important in terms of determining the performance of an application. The case I want to say a few words about involves data replication in the first tier of a cloud service as distinct from data replication in a service that might live deeper in the cloud. So what's this first tier? And how does it differ from things that live dip deeper in the cloud? So cloud computing systems these days are built in layers. The first tier is a highly elastic layer that lives on the outside, in some sense, of the, a data center, receives incoming requests from web browsers or applications using the web services protocols. And it's elastic, meaning that the cloud needs to be capable of deploying large numbers of new instances on a turn of a dime. So you might have NBC or CNN.com go from having 5,000 outward-facing first-tier service instances to suddenly having 100,000 in response to a surge load. And the way they do this is the first-tier lives with some constraints, one of which is that these first-tier applications are not allowed to have any kind of durable storage. They can have files, but every time one of these instances is launched, it gets new copies of those files that are empty. And when one is shut down, no effort is made to keep the files it might have generated. So they're all temporary files in some sense. You can create them, put stuff in them, but when you exit or crash or are terminated, those files vanish. So where does state get stored in the cloud? Well, it can be replicated in the first tier. You could have enough copies of a piece of information in the first tier that it won't get lost, and that's one option. It's called an in-memory replication in the first tier. Or we can focus on deeper tiers of the cloud. So most people say the first tier are these outward facing little web pages basically and some source, uh, some, some code associated with them, which could be substantial code. They build your Amazon page or your CNN page. The second tier is typically understood to mean DHTs and other types of caching services, memcached for example, that live right next to the first tier. Maybe not one to one, but in the vicinity of it. Deeper in the cloud, we find things like uh, highly uh, scaled out parallel versions of the Oracle database system or Yahoo's peanut system or other kinds of storage and database solutions. These have permanent storage. They live on somewhat smaller numbers of nodes, not tiny, not in the cloud today. And uh, they don't experience quite the same degree of elasticity and they certainly can keep data in a durable way. If you refer to the paper that we've just published in IEEE Computer in the January-February 2012 issue, you'll see that we're finding that because the first tier can't keep durable data, that this represents an optimization opportunity for people who are doing data replication using multicast. Basically, you can only replicate data using in-memory storage in the first tier because replicating data on disk doesn't have any special meaning since these entities, if they get shut down by the cloud management service, lose their state. So whether it was in memory or on the disk, it's as if it was in memory. You can store things on the disk if you want, but the disk files always vanish, even if you come back to life on the same node where you were running previously. There's just no durable state. So for the first tier of the cloud, we end up recommending an approach in which you use in-memory replication of data. And in order to, to give some guarantees to the external user and to avoid having asynchrony races where you might talk to the cloud, get a quick response, and go back and talk to a different replicant it doesn't even remember what you just did, we introduce a notion of what we call amnesia freedom. In ISIS 2, what this adds up to is you replicate your data using a primitive called send, and right before you reply to the client uh, outside the cloud, you call a primitive we call flush. That's it. Two lines of code. A lot of explanation, but two lines of code. In contrast, deeper in the cloud, uh, for example, if you're using reliable multicast as a front end to a replicated database system, you need to use something more like Paxos. And in ISIS 2, the primitive we have is called SafeSend, and it's carefully coordinated with the application to make sure that any delivered update becomes durable and definitely gets applied to every replica of the database or the file or whatever it is that's being managed. This has some complications associated with it. In the strongest forms of durability, we actually need to guarantee what's called 
at least once delivery of updates in the sense that you might actually get the same update twice because we can't tell if you've already seen it before and you may have to filter the duplicates but at least we'll give it to you for sure and every one of your replicas will get an update applied to it and that kind of issue can arise when you have a, a service that's living deep in the cloud and it experiences some kind of very disruptive failure where everything crashes we're able to provide these kinds of strong guarantees using a version of the Paxos protocols. SafeSend is a version of Paxos. The distinction, though, is this. In the first tier, where we use Send plus Flush, we are able to actually get far better performance and scalability. Deep inside the cloud, the best we can offer sometimes is Paxos, is SafeSend. Uh, but in this situation, we tend to see performance that degrades linearly with the number of nodes in a group and can actually degrade quadratically with the number of members of a group under certain conditions. In contrast, for the first tier, we get pretty much flat performance irrespective of how many members are in the group if the cloud lets us use IP multicast and we get very close to flat performance even when we have to tunnel through TCP links as we do if we're told to. On many kinds of cloud platforms, we are told to do that. So, in summary, as a developer of a cloud application, you have a choice to make. And part of that choice is to understand where your application will run. If it's going to run in the first tier, then it's going to have to use soft state only or be stateless. Here, the only meaningful form of replication is in-memory replication. And ISIS-2 offers a good solution for that. Namely, replicate using the send multicast protocol and use flush before you talk to your client to give you amnesia freedom. That's not as strong as true durability, but true durability, as we've discussed, isn't an option in the first tier. There's no place to store things permanently. In contrast, deeper in the cloud, you can use systems like ISIS-2 to replicate a service. And in this case, the multicast sits in front of the service, and there's a true form of durability possible. Namely, if the service is a database, does it have the update in the database? Here, we use SafeSend. We get a stronger durability guarantee, but it comes at a price, namely higher overhead. And you can see that price play out in the graphs of the IEEE computer article I described from the January-February 2012 special issue on the CAP theorem.